Welcome back. We want to talk in this programme about who made God, for I believe that it was not God who made humans, but that humans made God, probably for a multiplicity of reasons, for instance, to give meaning to their own lives, to help them understand themselves and their world, and probably because they were not able to countenance the idea that there not, might not be any meaning to life. Uh, with us to discuss this are James Mackey, a theologian and author of a recent book on Islam, Christianity and Judaism, um, which he says almost killed him to write it, and he probably also would almost kill anyone to read it. Uh, Florence Ryan, a lecturer at the Mater Dei Institute, a theologian and author of Formation in Holiness, and works in Thomas Aquinas, and Michael Nugent, chairman of Atheist Ireland. OK, James, tell us who made God. Well, if you look back through the history of organised religions, or indeed across the organised religions in different parts of the world at the moment, I think you'll come to one conclusion, and one conclusion only, that gods were created or made by the people in these religions, in their own image and likeness, and for their own self-interest. The key to coming to that conclusion is, if you hear a religious group putting the following words on the lips of their god, you will be my people, and I will be your God. Or even further still, if you hear them saying something like, outside of this religion, faith or church, there is no salvation, then clearly you're in the presence of people who have created a God in their own self-interest and therefore in their own image and likeness. But in case you should come to the conclusion that it's only religions that do this, <laughs> There are other examples of groups of people who would include as many atheists, at least, as religious people, who create gods also in their own image and likeness. And the classic example of that, going right back into history, is the god Mammon, or money, which they create in such a way, not just as... Now, oh, come off it, James. It's a ridiculous claim. Those people who believe in the markets and in making loads of money don't believe in anything divine, or rather, in, don't believe that that project is divine. No, and they wouldn't say so, but in fact... But they don't believe it either. It doesn't matter whether they believe it or not. Mammon, they create mammon in such a way that it controls their whole lives. You could see it every day. OK, but the sex you... controls the whole lives of people as well, and uh, gambling controls whole lives. No. A drug addiction not, controls whole lives. Not like money lives. does. Not like what? money does. Well, you're, you're, even you're, more so. You're involved every day of the week <laughs> in writing... You made an interesting point, and now have ruined it by introducing this idea of mammon. And it, it's... I haven't ruined uh, it. I have extended it to its proper dimensions. Because mammon does rule this world. So, uh, Look at the uh, way... Let's not talk about mammon. We're talking about this thing, God, that people believe in in religion. Yeah, but you're... No. Roger, do you believe that, that God is the creation of, uh, of uh, vested interests, really? That o over, the, over the millennia, people created gods in their own likenesses in order to uh, abrogate power to themselves? I think there's a truth in that. I think there's a truth in what Jim was saying, that we do tend to create God after our own image and likeness. But the truth of the matter is, from my perspective, is that the question should actually be reversed, because God is actually the creator of all that is. Without God is something totally other. By asking the question, who created God, we are putting God into the same world as us and making God like a thing just like us in the world. God is the creator of all that is in the world, as it says in Scripture. Where did but that the... idea come from, that God is the creator of all things in the world? That's... It's not from humans. It had to come from humans. It came from humans, but God, as we would say, would reveal God's self to humans. Humans came to this over the passage of time. There's a whole story. For me, the story would be in the Bible, which is the story of a people coming to understand God, and that story is ongoing in today's world. You mean the but Bible of the Old Testament and the New Testament? The Bible of the Old Testament and the New the Testament. The Bible of the Old Testament believes, uh, uh, reveals that lots of people believed in lots of different gods. Exactly. So well, lots of people believe in lots of different gods, but the name God, as we use it, is not a proper name. It's a name which has different meanings attached to it. It's like a noun describing the divine thing, which it seems that all people throughout the world have come to believe, or the majority of peoples throughout the world, have come to believe that there is something transcendent. Just by looking at the world, by looking in awe and wonder at the world, what you mean by transcendent? Question, transcendent, that is which is not like you or like me or like a tree, something which is totally other from us. And, uh, and how do we know that such something totally other from us exists? How do we know? 
we know that really by faith, which is, brings you to another step of development. You can reason by logic to a certain distance. For example, we can come, somebody like Thomas Aquinas would say that you can look at the world and the world will ask you to ask the question, why? Why something rather than nothing? Um, the world leads and, us and to th ask And that the leads question. you to believe that there's God? It, believe, it leads us to believe that there's something other than us. Well, we why? call that thing God. Why, why can't you say, well, there, there's no reason? Well, I suppose I... It's happened. One could ask that question too, but that is a mysterious question. I worked for a short while in China in, in the early 1990s. So it was in the middle of the communist regime. I was working with people who had grown up only with communism, who, as they believed it, believed in Mao. I was stunned and shocked to discover that they were asking me questions about what I believed because there was something within the human spirit that is searching for a meaning to life, oh, yes, a deeper meaning to yeah, life. They want, yeah. and that, Which is probably conceit. I wouldn't call it conceit. I think it can develop into conceit. And as our story tells us, we so often do try and create God after our image and likeness because it suits us to do so. But the God that we discover in all the major religions is continuously trying to fracture that understanding of God and continually trying to bring us to a different understanding so that we can learn how to give a proper name to God, that we can enter into relationship with uh, this All right, God. but how was it then that for a long time people... Uh, well, they believed in something transcendent, all right, but they then came to believe there were loads of gods and they, they, they uh, worshipped um, stone images uh, and worshipped uh, the sun, they worshipped mm -hmm. the moon and all that. So, it, it, and for tens of thousands of years that was so. Mm -hmm. um, and it was only uh, relatively recently, like maybe 5,000, 6,000 years mm -hmm. ago, that human beings came to believe there was only one God. Vincent, you're the one who's talking rubbish and nonsense now. <laughs> they did not worship stones. They did not worship the sun. People talk about sun worship. But stupid anthropologists put that in interpretation on the thing. The sun was to them a symbol of something. How do you know? Because that's how they used it. But if you how read, do you know? I, by reading their literature. I think that anthropologists might by, know a bit more by, than you would at that No. Time. And that because it, it doesn't fit your belief, you call the anthropologists stupid. No, it's the other way around. Because, I mean, you're, you're taking anthropologists' belief as the measure by which you're going to measure mine. But the point is that you know from their literature that that's what they did. And for their, from their symbol systems. These were images of something that can be imagined. How do you know? And presented in mythic form. They were their images for that. But I know that. But how do you that. know? Because I read the remaining literature from these but people. But the literature doesn't date back that far. Well, it, I mean, it certainly dates back to the point where uh, the sun was an image. It, this coincided with the origins of Christianity. It preceded Christianity. And Constantine was a sun worshipper, but okay. he's not a sun worshipper in that sense. Okay, just so, getting I mean, back to my no, point. But, 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 I mean, just you, getting back to my point. There are people you can't hold this discussion. Different, different things. All right, even if you, even uh, if you go uh, to I don't want yeah, to you, argue about the sun yeah. worship. I just, people believed in a whole mm -hmm. variety of different uh, ideas of God, uh, including belief in the multiplicity of God, yes. of gods. Um, so that. Uh, uh, and you believe there's only one God, I assume. Um, yes. So, and there's a story. I mean, I, I will limit myself to sacred scripture, to the Bible, Old and New Testament. And within that story, you can see that there was a belief in lots of different gods, small g, that people. But that points us to the, or reminds us of the fact that people believed in something other than themselves. It is, it is there. It is part of the human spirit. And the story of scripture shows us a story of people slowly coming to believe that there is just one God. We put that with the Jewish people. And the story, I think, of Exodus, when you have Moses and the burning bush, is one of the most profound stories there is, because you get introduced to this God. Um, and this God um, introduces himself, or we would say reveals himself to Moses, but reveals God's self in such a way that God reveals God's self as mystery. Well, if you believe the stuff that, that stuff of the book of Exodus, you must be discomforted by the kind of God that is uh, portrayed there. Who I'm is more a very vicious, cruel... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm more discomforted by the uh, people's portrayal of this God because that, that's the journey. We're, we're journeying, we're well, creating you, this God. This is, this you is, can't uh, just take a section uh, and take uh, that right, as the whole story. You've you, got to read you, the whole you, story. You, you base your belief in part on what it says about God in the book of Exodus. Yes. But it also says in the book of Exodus, or the later book, um, uh, about God uh, instructing the Israelites that when they get yeah. into the uh, the land of Israel, that they, they kill everyone, men, yeah. will, women, yeah. and children. A, a genocidal God. Yeah, that brings you back to your point about us creating God after our image and likeness. Exactly. We begin in Genesis, God created us after 
God's image and likeness. And since then, we continually try to create God after our image and likeness. But God but, but keeps pardon, coming back. But, but you're selective. Um, you you yeah, well, believe bits of the Bible, but not other bits of the Bible. No, I be, uh, it depends on what you understand by believe. I'm saying what is in the Bible is telling us the story of people coming to understand God. And that story is ongoing. The people, as they came to understand God, were creating God after their image and likeness at times. But the story keeps coming back that God remains faithful to them and keeps inviting them back to a deeper understanding this was of God. A, uh, this was a horrific God. A God faithful to a particular uh, group of people. And they, the, Jews, and the story uh, no, of the Exodus I think the Passover, the story of the Passover, which is celebrated in lots of cultures, mm -hmm. is a horrific story. Exactly um, the point I was uh, making. Exactly the point I was making. That that religion, too, at that stage, had made a God in the image of man instead of recognizing man in the image of God. Exactly. And the same thing happened with, in Christianity. Exactly yeah. the same thing happened. So you can't believe the Bible about God? You, the B Bible is telling you the story of a religion, so you believe you it can't as, believe the Bible. as a history. You believe it as a history of religion. It is not a textbook it's of a... religion or theology. Yeah. It is a history of religion, and you do believe the Bible because it gives <laughs> you. It gives people, you a, people say they believe in, Bible, in God because of the Bible, and then they say they can't believe the Bible. You don't take a fundamentalist reading of the Bible. You read the Bible as a whole story. We believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God, but we don't believe that each individual word in the Bible is inspired. And I think that's sometimes where problems get into How about chapters of the Bible? So you believe, you take it as an entity, as a whole, and the whole thing is bringing you on a journey. It's a process of coming to know the God who is a revealing God, as we would say. I Michael, what do you, you think I, of all that? I think you have to go Well, I think uh, where God's came yeah. from is... Michael, uh, it, James, if you don't mind uh, not having a private conversation uh, during our discussion... Uh, well, I think where God's came from in evolutionary terms is it was useful for people to identify patterns in the environment around them. It would save them from being eaten by a wild beast. Uh, people that were uh, able to notice more patterns than less patterns were more likely to survive. And as a side effect of our ability to identify patterns, we noticed patterns that didn't exist and misidentified patterns, thought that if we do this, the gods are angry, if we do this, the gods are pleased. And then some people added in the notion that if you do what I tell you, the gods will be pleased. And that's how things got, went from, from purely just believing in gods to religions which are effectively social control. How do you guys say that, James? Well, it doesn't even begin to measure up to the reasons they actually give you for believing in God. That's an artificial... Uh, are all theologians said. condescending, are they? Sociological... You have to be condescending twist to be a theologian, do you? No, and you don't have to be an intrusive and equally insulting... Uh, you, you, how, do you, how do you have to insult him? I'm not insulting him. You are? You're being condescending? No. I'm not being condescending. I'm Go saying on. that Go that on. doesn't come close to something else that I'm pointing you towards, but you won't look at it. That is, to the reasons the religions themselves give for believing in God. It doesn't even come close. No, that's I, I, that's a, an, a, an imposition of view upon these people. And there's also a problem with confusing religion or religions with God. Because God is that which religions are meant to be trying to bring people religions are seeking to try and bring people towards, but we often yeah. fall short. But that doesn't mean that God falls short. Well, I think broadly speaking, you're assuming that God exists in that sentence. Broadly speaking, um, every generation, we understand more about how the universe operates. And every generation, we move more explanations from the it must have been a God category into the we now understand how it happened naturally category. And in every generation, religious people uh, call the bits that we don't yet understand things that are caused by gods. But, what, but there, there's a relentless flow of what were previously religious explanations um, for natural phenomena being replaced by natural explanations, and there's nothing going in the other direction. There are no phenomena where we once thought that science gave us the best answer, and now we realise that it was a god that did it. Can science explain the beginnings 
No, but neither can religion. What science can do is it can take us currently back as far as the Big Bang and say that we don't yet know what happened before that, but we can be reasonably confident based on the relentless flow of scientific explanations overtaking religious explanations that when we do find out that the answer will be a natural one. And the field in which we're most likely to discover it is the field of quantum mechanics, and the, the, the current work, in, in particular by Stephen Hawking, which, which is explaining how, in, in quantum mechanical terms, the universe, our universe, not the universe, because there is, is, is um, a matter and energy beyond our May universe, I say to you, Michael, can, can have come about yes. without needing to invent a, a god to explain it. May I say to you, without being in the least condescending, much less insulting, that what's happening with quantum physics in particular is going in the opposite direction. Because, just to give you one simple example, because he won't let me give you two more. <laughs> when you watch a quantum physicist trying to make his way back to the Big Bang. His way. Horror. Oh. She will now find, and this is how they, they express the thing, that they come to what they call point zero. And what they find there is that time and space disappears. But there is something there from which it emerges. The Big Bang is now, in the most advanced quantum physics, demoted completely. It's demoted. And so, uh, now they're not going, they're not going to pick up the clue, which is staring them in the face there, that this entity, which is not a which is not characterized by time or space, which is, in other words, eternal and, so and spiritual. That that eternal and spiritual, because yeah. there, there's, and, a, uh, there's I, I questions give, about the origin of all this. You call make, it eternal and spiritual. Let me make the, say the next sentence, please. You've, uh, because uh, 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 physicists... Yeah. You've physicist, said loads of next sentences. I will, but, I, but yeah. I have to finish this thing. Okay. A, phys, a physicist, a current physicist, Bohm, has identified this thing. He thinks that the best um, uh, candidate for this is consciousness. He calls it consciousness. A vast, limitless sea of consciousness. Well, well, this, this, now, what, what, what they're actually finding is, is, is that... I've told is you that actually before, it, it, before it, it, time and space... Now. What they're finding is, is that before time and space, the time and space are, are, are both essentially dimensions of our, of our time, time. But, but beyond time, or whatever phrase that, that you want to find, is, is that what appears to be nothingness in terms of, of even vacuums, it is actually uh, f f uh, ener contains energy fluctuations from which particles can and do yes, come yes. into and go out of existence yes, yes, yes. With, with no apparent reason. And that the latest speculation from, from uh, quantum physicists is, is that from that one can conceive uh, it, consistent with the evidence, rather than just making something up, one can conceive a universe coming into existence. Except for one point. How are you, energy, able, to energy, How are you able to listen to what somebody says? I've listened while to While you them. have the condescending figure, figures oh, extended, stop it. trying to get I've in. I've listened carefully to everything, everything he said. I've been watching you there. I've listened to Go everything on. he said, and I'm, I'm just trying to make the point that is made Well, how do you make the these consciousness? What, what, do you dis what do you believe consciousness just, is in just order getting to there make that? Because con consciousness, consciousness is a quality of our, of our brains. Consciousness is not no, an, a, no, a, a, an no, independently no, existing no, entity. No, no, when, no. When, when our brains cease to function, our consciousness ceases to function. No. So you're, 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 you're purely speculating that the idea of consciousness is not only existing independent of, 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 of human brains, or indeed the brains of other sentient beings, but that Look, it was there at the beginning Look, and was, caused matter to come about. I was going to say the same thing about energy. Energy is not a thing in itself. Any scientist will tell you that. It corresponds to some sort of mathematical uh, measure. It's a measurement of the potential of, of, of something to do work. Uh, well, potential is, has yeah. to be the potential of something. Exactly, so the energy exactly. has to be the potential of something. Yeah. And out of which it is the potential is consciousness. It's the energy of consciousness, yeah. And so this, this vast sea is a vast sea of limitless but sea you, of consciousness. You're just making that up. Oh, for heaven's sake, do you want me to give you a list of texts? Yeah, can you do that? The, I certainly can do it, not now. OK, But you better enough, read right, these right. before you go on yeah, about the stuff you're going on yeah. about. And, for, and secondly, <laughs> you, you, you assume, that, you assume that science has, uh, has proven or somehow discovered that consciousness is, is an emergence from our brain. Quite to the contrary. No, well, they no, science doesn't prove anything. Science, unlike religion, science knows that we can never know the truth. 
what science says, oh. is, is that we, we can gradually approach the truth by, by removing uh, ideas Which, that are shown to not, not be consistent with the evidence. What religion says it contains the truth? Most religions will see themselves as on a journey towards the truth with a capital T. They don't actually know the truth per Same se. Science. But yeah, there's a journey going on there. And the two lang I mean, there are two different languages in a sense, but they're not opposed to one another whatsoever. The scientific language fits in very well with the belief in a God. Well, I, I'm, I'm quite happy with a religion that says we're seeking the truth. I'm not happy with a religion that says that we have found the truth, and nor will I be happy with a science that says that we have found well, the, the truth. Well, the religion I belong to doesn't say that it has found the truth. It says that we are on a journey towards the truth. We do believe there is a truth, and we believe that truth has to do with this thing that we call by a name called God, which we are still trying to discover the truth about what the meaning is. The truth of existence the truth of all reality. that is, the truth of reality, but, but the truth of why the there is something rather than nothing. What does that mean? That's the right. truth why, about what exists. Just mind if why, just, I think why mm. there is something rather than nothing, why are we here at all? Is there a reason for our existence? There has to be. But what what it, does it mean but, to be human? But, but uh, maybe those questions don't mean anything. Uh, mm. It's strange that they've come up all over the yes, world wherever course. there are yeah, people yeah, but that Maybe think. they don't mean anything. Maybe but there is no meaning to life. Maybe uh, there, there well, is no purpose. That's process, where uh, the belief in a God will say that there is a meaning yes, to life. Yes, and that's and why that's I'm suggesting the idea of God began to emerge. Because people couldn't believe there was no meaning to life. And the, 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 there was no meaning to their existence. They were just there. And they had to invent some, uh, some transcendence to give uh, value and substance to their lives in their minds. Well, I would go with you part of the way in, in that people are seeking, but I would suggest that there is an answer there which is giving us the answer back, which is the ever-present God who is with us, seeking to reveal God's self, to explain to us that there is a meaning. And this was the most important thing that comes into faith, is that this meaning is not just for this life, but could, it goes on beyond this you, life. What does it matter whether we believe in God or not? Even supposing there is a God, what does it matter whether we believe in God or not? I suppose belief in God, in a sense, does not make any difference, but it makes all the difference, because it determines how one looks on the world and how, how one sees things in the how world. How does it make any difference? One begins to see the world, I think, as giftedness, which grace, which is all faith language, but one has to use faith language when well, one moves into this sphere. I don't know what it means. What's this, what's grace? Um, I don't understand grace or Grace, that all is gift, and it also lets I'm one see that one has been created out of love and one has, has been it, loved it, into what, being. What does this giftedness mean? I don't know what it means. Giftedness means that you s give thanks to God, I suppose, and it calls you into worship. It called you into prayer. That's where religion emerged why, why from people wishing to come together. Worship for, 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 what's the need for worship? Why would you bother? To give thanks for the fact that we exist. But, but does, is the God you believe in, does he, she, is uh, require thanks? Mm, the God I believe in is not a he, she, or it. The God I believe in is not a who. <laughs> The God I believe in is something far beyond any words that can articulate. Thomas Aquinas asked the question, not who is God. We often get caught with that who is God, and on that you're right. We have created this who is God, who very much was this white man sitting on a cloud with a long beard. Um, I remember once being with a group of young children and asking them, who was God? They answered me, oh, it was a man with a beard. And I said, no, God is not a man. So one of them said, oh, is God a woman? Ha, ha, ha. I said, no, God is not a woman. So then they asked me, well, what is God if God is not man or woman? And luckily for me, one of them looked up and said, God is with big open eyes, God is wow. Do you and St. Vincent, does, that is what God is. God, God is wonder and awe. Does in, intervene directly in our lives? Is it some, uh, some being that one can have communication with? There's a difference between saying, does this God intervene directly in our lives and is this God of being that we can have communication with? This God is um, being in the sense that we are not being, this God simply is existence. And this God is, is present with us. It's not a God who, as some people over the ages said, a God who created us and disappeared, or a, God, a remote God out there. This God is eminently present with us, and is in, yes, but we can communicate I, with this I, I God. I don't mean this uh, uh, in, in a insulting to you, uh, uh, but, uh, but I find that when you get talking to people about religion, about mm -hmm. spirituality, that you, go, you, you veer outside normal language, and you veer outside normal understandings and things, and it becomes, to some extent, in the eyes of those of us mm -hmm. who don't share your belief and your perspectives, gobbledygook. Um, do, you understand, do you understand the difficulty? I understand that we're moving into another realm of thinking which takes us beyond the, the normal world in which we think, but I think it is rather natural to most of us, and it, it is very natural to us when we are young, 
but sometimes it can disappear from us as we go on. Children easily wonder and give uh, regard to the world with awe and are open to mystery. I mean, mystery is that which is perhaps best described God. We can never get to the bottom of who God is. The great mystics and all the great traditions have written about this God who is greater than any words can describe, God who is beyond our language, and yet this God whom we must use language to describe because what we seek to enter a relationship. God, if God is greater than anything we can describe. Why is God great? God is something other than another human being. Because some people think God is a great, all-powerful human being who is way beyond any other human being. But to speak of God in that way is incorrect because God is something totally other than we are. God is another kind, totally... Right. Right. The difficulty is, though, if, if you allow yeah. yourself, if you allow yourself to stray beyond uh, applying reason to the apparent evidence of our senses, um, but, and, and if you allow yourself to go into that area, not just in imagination, but in terms of, of, of asserting that you're representing reality, then, then you're allowing yourself to make up anything. And, and it does, I mean, to be honest, I do find at times discussing theology, it's, it's, it's almost like discussing the rules of Quidditch with people who believe that Harry Potter is a documentary. I mean, there, there, there are things that are real and there, there are things that we, are, that we make up. Making up as stories, that's fine, make up as, you know, in, in terms of passing on morals and so on. But, but when one allows oneself to, to, to assert that, that these imagined uh, explanations are actually real, then you can, make, you can come up with anything. I suppose a prime way or a central way to God is actually through the senses, through the observation of the senses, and that would be something that the Greek philosophers would have come to God in that way. It is a God who, as I said, is not a proper name, it's a God who is a noun who is describing that which we cannot explain, the other thing. But it is primarily to our senses and to our reason, because a, a central Christian tenet would be that it is in our reason that we most image God. Well, so but that's science, 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 is, quite, quite, science is quite comfortable it's, it's, with the idea that there are phrase, things yeah. that we don't understand and, yeah. and that there are things that, that we don't yet know. But the difference between science and religion is the way that we approach trying to understand it. Uh, in, in science, you try to prove your theories wrong. In, in religion, you, you recite things to reinforce beliefs that you already no, have. Please, I don't think so. I think can, I, yeah. can I just answer that? I mean, it is not the case. It's simply historically speaking, it is not the case. If I say the same to you, what is that the case? That uh, the approach. science approaches realities and discovers things about reality which then turn out to be true. But that religion doesn't do that. It, it, it makes up things as it goes along, as it were. That simply isn't true. Well, it simply is. The scientific no, method, you understand how the scientific method I operates. Do. And you understand how making things up operates. And there's a distinction between the two. There is, but it is not true. <laughs> What is not true is that science is what discovers reality and religion, on the other hand, is what makes things up. And this is the whole thing about the relationship between science and religion. That from the beginning, what was then called physics and metaphysics were one thing. The physics described the way that the physical world is made up and how it operates and how you can understand, you know, birth and death and all the things you want to understand. The metaphysics is once you have a kind of a, a total description, and it might be fairly primitive, of that, then there are certain implications as to what the whole is like, including where it originated and how it is designed and directed to its, its, its own goals. And that's where the religion thing comes in. And that's where you discover, as they're beginning to discover again, that when you put the whole thing together, either in the relatively primitive the way... Whole it, together? The whole account of reality together. When you put the whole thing together... You'd never guess. Go on. Hmm? You'd never guess that's what you were talking about. Go on. Yeah, well, the whole of reality... I've just made that point. Account of reality or the whole of reality? An account of the whole of reality, yeah. <laughs> then uh, the whole of the physical world... The whole of the physical world, let's well, say. Yeah. Then you come upon certain implications as to what its origin might be and so on and so forth. Why do you have so, to so get involved in all that palaver and just say we get to wonder the origins of, of, uh, 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 of the world or the, of the universe? Yeah. Look, here's, here's the question. Why, why do you have to engage things, James, that old palaver to get to that point? That's one of the implications. The, James, the, the James, answer to that question is one of the implications <laughs> of the description that you gave of it and how it has worked out. For example... I, I, this I, is I have very no idea what you're talking no about. Palaver. You've talked now with, with, oh, with, come with on, authority... Vincent. You know perfectly well. If now, you, over, the uh, last, what, over the last few minutes, I'll give you simple, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, let me give you one James, simple James, example, which will explain it. it. No, let yeah, me give okay, one yeah, simple example. Right, let me explain it to you. 
For instance, you've discovered that the thing is designed. It doesn't work haphazardly. It is run by law. What's, you talk, what's the yeah. thing you're talking about? The universe. Go on, yeah. Course, the, scale, the scale of the universe, and James, once you, is that once there are you over 100 billion that it is galaxies, designed. each of which has over 100 please, billion stars like please, our sun. Please. And the idea that a god I'm, that might have created that would have a concern for beings of I'm one not species on, on that point one at all planet at the moment. revolving one of those moment, suns. Do you, mind? You, you were talking about the, the, the whole of reality, and if you're, if you're talking about the whole of reality, that's the scale that you have to, 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 to look at. And that. in that context, the idea that anything that might have been responsible for that would have any concern for what human beings on the planet Earth are doing is, is preposterous. I wasn't addressing that issue. I was addressing the issue of when you know as best you can what is involved in the whole thing, adhering together and developing and evolving. And you notice, just to take one example, the element of design. The thing is designed by Apparent laws. Design. Apparent design. It is designed. No, you know not. it is designed. You just now there you are. I mean, you're known now as just as dogmatic. No, it's not dogmatic. Well. Yes. On, on the best available you evidence, know it's, you, it's not you designed. You say you know it's designed. I don't know it's designed. Of course you do. No, I'm, I'm I don't know it's designed. The of laws I don't. of physics are the description of how it is designed. Okay. But I don't know it's designed. But the further, the more study they do, the more they see that I, there I'm is sorry, actually. Sorry. A, the more, sorry, the more study that has been done amongst the yes. scientists. Like my primary yes. study was actually in science, and science can bring lots of people deeper into faith, which is quite remarkable. That a lot of scientists, as they discover the order and they yeah. grow in, I have to use the word wonder again, because they are just amazed at how things are so intricately designed. The further you go into the atom, the more you break it down, but the isn't more you see there's an order within it. Let me just add one point to that. the point of evolution? Let me just add one point to that. May I, about the, the Greeks and their physics and metaphysics? No, the, no. The, the leading, leading scientists at the moment in the quantum business, Schrodinger and Heisenberg and these people, are going back to the Aristotelian account, the Aristotelian and Platonic account, as the one that, that best fits a contemporary, hugely more sophisticated account of how the universe works and is designed. Now, that you cannot deny unless you insist on doing it and then ask me to send you the, the books and yes. I'll do it. No, it what, no, what it comes back to, fact, the first thing I was saying comes back to is, is, is the propensity of human beings to misidentify patterns that aren't there. There, there are things oh, that, that can that create the there. illusion Stop of design. There, there, there are things in nature that create the illusion of design yeah, but, but, but yeah. that does not mean that there is a conscious design or, or designer there. If, if, if you want to be uh, throwing book titles around, if, if you read The Blind Watchmaker by Richard Dawkins, oh, you'll, you'll, you'll You'll, you'll understand how the illusion of design uh, But we're not talking about God as a conscious designer. I mean, essentially, we're going back to evolution, which fits in perfectly with the Christian story. Um, that oh, all you have is a, the, the Christian story is dependent on there on there being an Adam and an Eve who had, not, who had who had no, who had not, original sin. No. Whether, you re, whether, whether you read it metaphorically or, or literally, who had original sin? If you take evolu put, bring in evolution, you take out Adam and Eve, you take out original sin, you therefore take out the reason for for Jesus being crucified, and the whole thing collapses. That's, uh, I mean, that's, that's just not wrong. True. No, yeah. the story it's, 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 of Adam and Eve, as you say, is a story to try and explain the beginnings, which we have still failed to explain thousands of years later. But that there was a beginning is the key thing. We as Christians say the beginning was with God, whether that beginning was the creation of energies, the creation of atoms, the creation of whatever. But evolution fits in with that, that there was a God who created, and from them we have secondary causes. God has gifted us with the ability to have causality within ourselves, within our atoms, within the genes, the genetic composition of things. All that points to, it's not that God is there designing things, and God is not the clockmaker, which was, um, if you like a teaching that was around in the 1800s and the 1900s, that God wound up the clock and left the world go off. That's not the best Christian understanding of God. There, of course, will be many understandings which have been put forward over the years, which have lost, they had followings, but they were never towards the truth. Because as I say, we are journeying towards discover, discovering more clearly what this Fraser, God can is. I ask you, what do you understand by God? I asked you earlier, do you think that we can have a personal relationship with God? Yes, we can have a personal relationship of God, and that is, I suppose, the centrality of why religions develop and why peoples develop into this groupings, faith traditions, and develop a relationship with God. They come together to give worship to this God, to thank this God, yeah, to ask this God how, for things. How do you develop a personal How do you develop a personal it does How do you know whether you're not hallucinating? How do you know whether you're not hallucinating? Well, yes, there are stories of people hallucinating over the times. I think the fact of being in a community a community or faith tradition helps one to bounce one's experiences. 
one's truths, one's interpretation of scripture. It would be an important part of, you cannot just take up the to Bible. To bounce your experiences of truths. Uh, of truth. The, we are growing towards the truth. We bounce off. But, 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 for example, I mean, within my own tradition, for a long time, we thought it was the truth that people should have slaves. Slowly over time, and very slowly, I have to say, we began to say that this cannot be in line with our understanding of a God who created every single human being after their image and likeness. So therefore, we have to revisit how we might regard other people, that we cannot have slavery. But now, isn't that a good example, that we came over time to, for, for, mm -hmm. for, for, for millennia, yeah. uh, people believed that slavery was a, yeah. a creation of God. And then... We came um, to, and we, we, uh, uh, we uh, and indeed ordained by God. I wouldn't and, say a creation of God, but I would say that God wasn't against it. I mean, I think language is important. Uh, all right, and then and we came, and, and then, and then we came to believe that slavery was iniquitous, and then we thought, well, if slavery is iniquitous, God can't have uh, uh, have ordained this or, or uh, permitted it, and therefore, so we have to amend our idea of God. Mm -hmm. Now. So the thing makes a nonsense of it, uh, of well, the idea of it God. It might then. make a nonsense to your notion of God, but to me it, it puts more respect on us because God created humankind to grow into relationship with God. God did not create robots to love God and give thanks to God. God created humans so that they might move forward. I think, uh, I, think yeah. I, I, I would take Vincent's side and yours on, on this one. Mm -hmm. For the simple reason that, uh, as I set out to say in the first place, <laughs> Um, religion like a year ago have made God in their own image yeah. they have and to that extent of course they endorse immorality yes. and, and so there is no there is no simple relationship between having an organized religion and having the truth about God there isn't. Yeah, but that I is mean, our own saying, religion yeah. And, yeah. And, the, and, the, and the example of religion of sin that Dr. Religion of Sin yeah. is a perfect example of it um, they distort the revelation that is there. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to take a break now, and after the break, we've got to ask a question. That for years we were told in this country that God was all powerful, intervened directly in our lives if we prayed hard enough, Limerick could win the All Ireland final or, or, or whatever. And, and if God can intervene in our lives, how about the Holocaust? And if God can't intervene in our lives, what the hell is God doing? Join us then. Y Many of us were brought up in the belief that we could have a personal relationship with God, that God intervened directly in our lives. Uh, and even from what you said, um, that you, you believe that God is present in our lives and that you can communicate with God. If you can communicate with God, it's a presumably a two-way thing and there's some kind of intervention, some kind of um, engagement in God, uh, by God in one's life. Um, how come such awful things have happened? in humanity if God engages with us? I think we have to be careful in talking about the actual presence of God among us, with us all the time, and this notion of an intervening or an interfering God. The interfering God or intervening God has a particular notion of humanity. A, possibly a better understanding is of a God who created humankind and is with humankind, but is with humankind. Humankind are created, because they're created by a God whom we deem to be good, we say that all that is created is good. Humankind is good. But for some reason, which we have called, inverted commas, original sin and sin, humans do dreadful things, like the Holocaust. Um, why but why didn't God design us right and ensure that we didn't do like the Holocaust? Because there's this Holocaust. thing called freedom, or freedom to choose. God didn't create robots. Why, God, why not take away the gene that causes uh, Holocaust? I don't, I don't think there is a gene there that causes Holocaust, but there is some, I mean, there is what we call the mystery of evil. We cannot explain evil. The best thing we can do as a, as a Christian looking at the Holocaust is go back to maybe, uh, I think it's Elie Wiesel's book, Night, which he describes the horrific scene of, I think it's three bodies hanging there, one of them of a young man, a young boy actually, who spends hours to di dine. They, tried to, they were being hung because other people had tried to escape. And the question asked by the, pe the Jews who were forced to watch was, where is God now? And the answer he got was, there is God hanging with that boy. That's what we understand by the presence. It, it, it brings you into the realm of faith. But if you also, can I just continue for one second? If you think of the faith that I am speaking from, which is the Christian faith, the central part of that story is this belief that we have that our God became human and walked amongst us, that this God ended up being crucified and died on a cross. And this is a very deep truth of Christianity, which tries to bring us a bit further. Therefore intervenes very much in our lives. If Can you explain came how it came on earth? What? Came on earth, but how do you understand intervention, Vincent? 
Uh, well, in, if Jesus was God and he came on earth to change things in some way, that's intervening in our lives. Came among earth to try and give us a message so that we might yeah, change, change things. things. So, so that what? we might change things. Oh, all right. But he we might to refuse to listen to, to Jesus change Christ. Things. That's changing things. Yeah. yeah. But um, normally the notion of an interventionist God is a God who will come in and make us do this or make us do that. Michael, what do you make of this? Well, I think it's a very important point with regard to the Holocaust because it takes us beyond just, you know, theological speculation and, and into, you know, real suffering and, and real people mm -hmm. being killed. And that came about for two reasons. It's, it's, it's because of the, uh, the dogma of, of um, Nazism and the dogma of Christianity. Both of those combined enabled Hitler, who believed that he, and wrote that he believed he was doing the work of the Lord in exterminating the Jews, uh, to, to allow a country of otherwise good people, but who had been brought up to believe that the Jews had killed their savior, to justify to themselves things that in the absence of religion and fascism, they would have intuitively known were wrong. Might I just ask, is just because the followers of this God James do great evil things, does that make word. this God to be unbelievable, to be non-existent? Because the followers will always do things. And what do you mean by the dogma of Christianity? Christians You're may have said word, that Jesus Christ was crucified, but Christianity teaches very clearly that Jesus Christ was a Jew lived a Jew and died a Jew. Well, there's so many I'm very afraid, I'm afraid, Michael, you don't get the last word either. That's all we have time for. Do join us next week when we'll ask, should God be prosecuted for crimes against humanity? Join us then. <laughs>